Hi, I'm Ken Forkish, uh, and this series of videos for my new Flower Water Salt Yeast Cookbook, uh, the second bread book that I've written. Um, uh, what I'd like to do basically is just show you how to do the things in motion, so it may uh, supplement your understanding. Um, when uh, th this video right now is to show you how to mix the dough, and we're going to mix it that will include uh, uh, the, the Levant culture in the dough. Anytime I mix the dough, it's really easy for me to get started because I keep everything in one drawer in one spot, or at least very close. Um, so I just pull it all out, and then you're not. The worst thing to do is start something and then every new step have to go look for something else. It's not efficient, definitely not pro. <laughs> so one way you can ace your game in the kitchen: start out with uh, you need a scale, you need a probe thermometer, ideally. Some of these you can fake your way around, you know, you can guess at the temperature. It's hard, you can't really guess at weight. Um, I use uh, tablespoon and measuring spoons for yeast and salt, uh, simply as just to dip them in and get them into the, the weight. Um, this is my empty dough bucket. This is my container of water that I've already tapped. Uh, but what you do, in case you haven't seen how to do it, is Sooner or while, you're going to learn just using your finger if it's close or, you know, and you can go like this and if I ask you to use water at 95 degrees, um, you'll come pretty close in time. And if it's a little hot, just add a little cool water, vice versa, it's easy. Uh, like I guessed and I got to 94.2 and that's totally fine, but I've been doing this for a while. Um, anyway, when you have everything in its place, it'll all work out real easy. And, Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything for this demo. Um, so to use the scale, you take your empty dough bucket, it's clean, um, you put it on the scale and then you hit zero. And this recipe, I'm using the, uh, the standard, which is the first recipe in the cookbook. Um, and I usually use it to make pan breads, but sometimes I can make these great Dutch oven loaves. It's the same dough. So you do everything the same way until you get to the process of shaping the loaf. Uh, and I kind of like that flexibility. So I want uh, 400 grams of water. And so when the scale starts at zero, some people are a little intimidated by using a scale. I just want to show you how easy it is. Uh, you just pour water in. At the very end, sometimes maybe you'll be a little over and you can dip some out. Uh, or you just go slow at the end until you get it. Uh, so the instructions when you use the Levan culture for the dough mix is you add the water and then you add in 100 grams. Um, there's 28 grams in an ounce, so you could do the math. You could just round up and say it's roughly four ounces if you like to think of ounces and not grams. So I put zero on the scale again. I wet my hand uh, so the, the Levan culture doesn't stick to my hand. And then I just pour it in. And you can see how I'm using my hand to pull it out, and you'll find you can be a lot more precise that way. And you're going to dive your hand in here anyway, so it's going to get you know some stuff on it. Um, right until I get to 100 grams, and you know what? If you have 85 grams, that's all. It'll be fine. If you um, need to like make two dough mixes and you only got that much left, you don't have to go to the full 100 grams. It's okay to shorten it a little bit. So once you pour it in there. Swoosh it around a little bit or just dive your hand in and you can see that it all dissolves almost completely into the water. I don't know if that shows it or not. Um, so you do that and then you add the flour, uh, which for this recipe is 100 grams of whole wheat flour. Whoops. Sometimes you push the button. So keep your eye on it and make sure it goes to zero. So it's 100 grams of whole wheat flour. Um, and the reason I call this recipe the standard is because this is the one that I made the most. Uh, at home, when I was making other breads, when I ran out of this, I would usually make another one because it's just, you know, whether it's for a sandwich or croutons or morning toast, um, it's the bread that I wanted to eat the most. Um, and then it has white flour. And we use an auto lease process for the recipes in this book, just like I did in my first book. Um, the only difference with this one is that it has the Levan culture in the auto lease. So uh, what that means is you're just mixing 
uh, in this case, the flour, the water, and the levain uh, together. You let it rest for about 15 or 20 minutes, um, and then you finish the mix with the salt and the yeast. Although I'm going to add it now. Uh, I, it was confusing. I'll, never, I'll talk about that in a sec. So just mix it up with your hand. You just dive your hand in and just move the stuff around, and it comes together. And you can see I dive my hand under it, pick up the loose flour, and that's it. I could do the pincer thing if I wanted, but it's pretty much there. Then I call it the squeegee method. With one wet hand, get the schmutz off my fingers and my thumb, and then you can see what it needs to look like. And the, the point of this is it gives the flour in the dough time to, these are pretty wet doughs, um, it gives the flour time to absorb all the water, and it does take a few minutes for that to happen. Uh, once you add the salt and the yeast, um, the salt will actually slightly inhibit the water absorption of the dough. So that's why you wait to add or mix dough, to mix the salt into the dough until a little bit later. And like I said, it's just 15 minutes is fine. I say 15 to 20, so you have a range. Uh, once I've done this auto lease mix, I like to scrape off the edges just to get it all in there. Otherwise, it'll just dry out on the edge of the bowl and it'll be harder to clean. Uh, so it's much about that as it is about eliminating waste. Um, the next thing I do immediately after this, I don't wait the 15 or 20 minutes, is I go ahead and I put the salt and the yeast in there. And the whole idea is just, let's just get all this measuring stuff over with. And um, so included in the assembly of stuff you need, I use this tiny little AWS scale. It's like 15 bucks. It's not much, but it measures small measurements very accurately. Um, this is good to the 0 0.01 grams. Um, if you go wherever you like to shop online for stuff like this, if you go there, it will, any of the digital waste scales will um, tell you their accuracy and they'll tell you either 1 gram, 0.1 gram, or 0 0.01 gram for kitchen scales. Uh, for this guy, I like it to, uh, this is accurate to 0 0.01 grams. So if I wanted 0.32 grams, I can measure it here. I don't, I'm not that geeky about the measurements, but I just want to let you know what that means. Um, the bigger scale, that I use, this is accurate to one gram increments. Um, so this is fine for the bigger weights. For the smaller weights, if you don't have a little scale like this, there's only really one small weight, and that's the yeast. Um, and if you want to know the amount, it'll be in the recipe in the book. Um, the salt um, is a little bit more, and the salt will work on the, the bigger scale. But I'm going to go ahead and measure the salt in, like so, until it hits its number. And then I just sprinkle the salt on top of the dough, like that, and then you can do this, um, you can do this with quarter teaspoons because I told you that um, one quarter teaspoon very reliably equals uh, one gram of, uh, of weight. Uh, so if you don't have this fine scale, you can use the big scale for the salt. Um, and you can use quarter teaspoon measurements to get the accurate yeast weight. Uh, but I do want to sell a few books, so I'm not going to include that with these measurements in the video. Um, then I sprinkle the yeast right on top of the dough and right on top of the salt. Uh, and you'll, there's a lot of people that think that will kill the yeast, and I'm here to tell you that's a myth. It will not. Um, if it were a very high concentration of salt and fresh yeast, then yes, uh, some of the yeast that's in contact with the salt will die off, and even that's going to be a very small amount. Um, at my bakery, we used to use fresh yeast for our baguette dough. We'd sprinkle the fresh yeast right on top of the salt while it's auto-leasing. It's not a problem. Uh, so if you're worried about salt and yeast being in contact, there's other things you can worry about. But that's really not necessary to do that. So that's the end of the auto-lease, is you mix the flour and the water, hopefully the Levant culture if you have it, uh, and then once that mix, sprinkle the salt on top, sprinkle the yeast on top, wait 15 minutes, and then we'll finish the mix. How to mix the bread dough. So we mix the flour and the water. We had its auto lease process begin. I keep a container of water handy. You want wet hands for this. And so uh, I dive my hand into the water bucket. 
it's good to have a kitchen towel handy. And you're going to like life if you have like 20 kitchen towels in your kitchen. <laughs> it's so much easier. Anyway, wet hand. Dive all the way underneath, grab from the very bottom, and you can see what I want to do is fully enclose the salt and the yeast. It takes like four or five segments of dough, stretch and pull over like that before I actually start to, to mix it. Um, so you can see how I've folded, uh, the, I've enclosed the salt and the yeast on the inside. Um, and then I use the same method for mixing the dough that I used in my first bread book, Flour, Water, Salt, Yeast. Uh, you already knew that. <laughs> um, and it's called, I call it the pincer method. And the idea is you want to integrate the ingredients, the flour and, and the salt and the yeast with a wet hand. It really combines them in the dough easily. You don't have to stress it at all. Uh, so you just, you do this kind of motion about five times across. But if you, if I tilt it, you can see each time I just did this pincer to cut through. Because these doughs have a lot of water in them, they're soft, and it's, you don't need a strong hand to do it. Um, and uh, so I pincer across, I fold it over itself. So essentially it's just cut and fold, cut and fold, cut and fold. Uh, for, you know, in my res in the recipe, I say it takes about five minutes. Uh, I know I'm faster than, than you are because I've done this thousands of times, at least. <laughs> uh, but I thought if I just showed you my technique, um, it saves you worrying about whether or not you've actually, are you done yet? Are you finished? Did you do it right? It's, if, you, if anybody's used Jim Leahy's No Need Bread Recipe, which is just iconic, Jim's an awesome baker, he wrote a great book, um, and he kind of got this no meat bread Dutch oven baking thing started in popular culture. It's very, you know, he doesn't even mix it this much, and his breads come out good. Um, I like to fully integrate and develop the dough a little bit with these folds, and it helps develop the gluten a little bit, and the more development you get in the gluten, you get a little bit more rise in the bread. So. Um, I'm not timing myself, I'm probably doing it a little bit more than I would if I was just making a loaf for me, um, just to show you the technique. But that's what it looks like when it's done. Um, if you've been baking bread at home for decades, this is nothing like what your bread dough is going to look like, I'm pretty confident. Um, traditional Americana, the doughs are, would be much stiffer, which means there's less water in the dough, uh, probably mixed in the stand mixer. Uh, the stiffer dough, after a while, it's too stiff to even do the pincer method that I do. So it looks like this. Um, it's going to rise for a few hours. Um, you can also adapt so it rises um, uh, for the same amount of time, but the loaf proofs overnight in the refrigerator. I kind of segue the wrong direction. Sorry for that. What you're going to want to do is give this a few folds uh, as it's rising uh, to give a little bit extra strength to the dough. First one, I'll do it about 15 minutes after the end of the mix. But this is how you do it. It's really simple. Don't need to overcomplicate it whatsoever. Thanks.